Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, America is facing a farm and food crisis. As we're here speaking today in the nation's capital, there are farmers and ranchers that are struggling, struggling with so many burdens, so many natural disasters, uh, struggling with, a, with a, an economy, with inflation. Let me say that again. America is facing a farm and food crisis. Now, as the chairman of the House Committee on Agriculture, I've had the honor to travel across this country to hear from the farmers, ranchers, producers, consumers, and everyone in between across <coughs> excuse me, our great agricultural value chain. My colleagues and I have took what we heard on the road and to craft a bipartisan and highly effective farm bill. No matter where we traveled, one thing was clear. America's farm economy is in crisis. And with no, no farms, there's no food. The last time we passed a farm bill was in 2018, and a lot in our world has changed since then. As I stand before you today, farmers across the nation are grappling with immense challenges. For the first time in years, we're witnessing a downturn spiral in net farm income, with projections for 2024 showing a staggering $54 billion decline. That's the largest two-year loss in net cash farm income in history. And that's across just eight of the commodities. You add into that the specialty crops, it is a farm and food crisis. These are not just numbers on a spreadsheet. They are the livelihoods of American farmers, the backbone of our rural communities, and the source of food, fiber, and fuel for our nation and the world. Now, why is this happening? Simply put, farm production costs have skyrocketed. Input prices remain near record highs. Yet the prices of farmers receive for their crops have plummeted. The prices of corn, soybeans, cotton, and wheat have seen an average drop of 21%. All while operating expenses continue to soar. The U.S. trade deficit will reach a record-breaking $30.5 billion in 2024. But according to USDA, that record will be broken next year with the 2025 agricultural trade deficit expected to reach $42.5 billion dollars, all contributing to this nation's farm and food crisis. Many producers are barely breaking even, and if there are, they're lucky. Others are sinking deeper into debt with USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, forecasting farm sector debt to hit a record $54 billion by year's end, the highest inflation adjusted level in more than 60 years. And while these numbers are daunting, they reflect only part of the story. Since the last Farm Bill was passed in 2018, America's producers <coughs> have faced powerful headwinds from extreme weather, uh, rising foreign subsidies, trade barriers, global conflict, and supply chain disruptions. From the trade war with China to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, our agriculture sector has taken hit after hit. Despite these challenges, federal support for production agriculture in 2024 is projected to be at its lowest level since 1982. Let me say that again, 1982. Imagine the impact this downturn has on our rural communities who already struggle with declining populations and a shrinking tax base. Imagine what it means for national food security when, and ultimately uh, national security when the very people who grow our food are unable to sustain their operation. Current economic conditions have resulted in farmers and ranchers eating through their available liquidity and working capital. And so, in the September Beige Book, the Federal Reserve Bank reported declining conditions for the agriculture sector in their respective regions. Various banks reported that credit providers seeing building financial 
uh, stresses within the ag sector. Without financial certainty, lenders will be facing a credit crunch, and it will become increasingly difficult to get producers to cash flow. The time for Congress to step up and pass a new farm bill is now. An extension of the current policy is not acceptable. Our current farm safety net, crafted in 2018, well, it was great for 2018, it's simply outdated. While supplemental assistance kept many farms afloat, it's clear there are existing programs have not kept up with inflation or the realities on the ground. In fact, in our July hearing before the House Agriculture Committee on the state of the farm economy, uh, producers and lenders told us that even if we deliver an improved farm, net, farm safety net, additional assistance may be necessary to account for the losses experienced over the last year while Congress has failed to act. I stand ready to work with my colleagues on the Appropriations Committee and leadership to deliver near farm assistance to bridge the gap uh, to a highly effective five-year farm bill. A strong farm bill isn't just about agriculture. It's about our food supply, our rural communities, and our national security. If we fail to act before the year's end, if we settle for just extending the current law, we will be condemning thousands of farm families to an uncertain and potentially devastating future. And when you lose farms, you lose food. And you lose food, you have food insecurity, which leads to national insecurity. Thankfully, the House has a bipartisan solution to the crisis in our farm economy. The Bipartisan Farm, Food, and National Security Act was crafted by farmers for farmers. It is a product of intensive input, feedback negotiation, negotiations, and the realities of where our agriculture industry is and the tools it needs to succeed. I want to walk through how this critical piece of legislation will benefit our rural communities, our food security, and our national security. The commodity title aids farmers in managing risks and provides assistance for following precipitous declines in commodity prices. Through the reauthorization and enhancement of the commodity, marketing loan, sugar, dairy, and disaster programs, producers are provided some certainty in times of unpredictability. Our bipartisan farm bill increases support for the price loss coverage and the agriculture risk coverage programs to account for persistent inflation and the rising costs of production, the volatility within the agriculture markets. We have not invested in this area um, significantly any increase uh, for decades. This provides the authority to expand base acres to include producers who currently are not able to participate in ARC or PLC. That's extremely important when you look at new, young, and beginning farmers, the future farmers. The future farmers are going to provide us our food security, uh, provide food and fiber, building materials, energy resources. Uh, they need to be able to have that toll of base acres. It modernizing mar modernizes marketing loans and, and the sugar policy. You know, the sugar policy has always been divisive on this floor. You know, picking sides between those who produce our sugar, the cane and the, and the sugar beets producers of this nation, and those who utilize it, those who use it to, uh, to make our food, uh, the bakers, the confectioners, the great, great companies, all across both of those spectrums, great family-owned businesses. Mr. Speaker, this farm bill, both sides of that are holding hands. We've, got the, the, we've worked hard to get them in a room and to work out you know, modest reforms that both sides can agree upon. This will be the first farm bill that I know of where we're, we don't have sugar wars, uh, where they've come together. And I appreciate the folks who came to the table uh, to work out those. It bolsters dairy programs to continue providing vital assistance. That's the number one, number one commodity in my home state of Pennsylvania. Agriculture is the number one industry. Uh, we have included in this farm bill uh, improvements in the dairy, uh, dairy margin coverage. We've increased the amount of pounds that can be uh, Insured, which is really important when you look at the consolidation of dairy farms over the years. Over the past decades, we've lost a third of our dairy farms in this nation. We don't ever want to be dependent on another country 
for our food, depending on them for, another, for food supply, and that includes dairy. Uh, in this farm bill, <coughs> we increased the amount of pounds you know, from 5, 000, uh, uh, 5 million to 6 million pounds that can be insured under the dairy margin coverage. We modernizing the cost factors, uh, which are more than, uh, uh, well, basically predated 2018 in terms of how that insurance program. And it's not a handout. These, these are public-private partnerships uh, where the farmers step up, they purchase coverage, they decide how much coverage they want to purchase. We've engaged the private sector to create these, these programs. And yes, the government does make them more affordable uh, so, that we, uh, so that our farmers are able to keep farming, so that we're able to have continued food security, that we can have continued national security as a nation. We, uh, uh, we enhance the standing disaster programs and expands eligibility for assistant, assistance. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, when you look around this country, and just in the past year, the amount of flood, the amount of drought, hurricanes, wildfires that have impacted our farmers and those, that acreage in so many devastating ways, you know, to be able to enhance standing disaster programs so that they're reliable, that they're more timely, that they help keep our farmers farming. You know, that is the direction we need to go in. And the Farm, Food, and National Security Act uh, does that, accomplishes that, the language with, within that. Um, the conservation title provides farmers, ranchers, and growers with financial and technical assistance to address a variety of net, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, to address a variety of natural resource concerns such as soil health and erosion, water quality and quantity, and the wildlife habitat. The 2024 Farm Bill continues to support our proven system of voluntary, incentive-based, and locally-led conservation through various improvements. You know, Mr. Speaker, I don't know whether you know this, but in terms of, of endangered and threatened species, there has been more endangered and threatened species delisted through the efforts of these locally led voluntary uh, incentive based conservation programs that are in this farm bill than, quite frankly, what uh, Fish and Wildlife or anyone else has done through more punitive measures. And we're proud of that fact. Uh, these are great programs. They do a lot of good, good things. Uh, they, it, we provide historic investment in Title II by reallocating uh, the Inflation Reduction Act conserve, conservation dollars and expands <clears throat> covered conservation practices. It protects and enhances working lands conservation programs like uh, the Environmental Quality Incentive Program and the Conservation Stewardship Program while promoting precision agriculture, the agriculture of today and tomorrow. Uh, it includes common sense easement reforms and protects working forest lands through newly authorized forest conservation easement programs. It strengthens and improves program administration for the Regional Conservation Partnership Program and, and <coughs> the Technical Service Provider Program and PL566, with, which does, deals with our watersheds. It modernizing the Conservation Reserve Program by incentivizing the enrollment of marginal lands and emphasizing state partnerships. You know, soils that are fertile, we need to be growing. Uh, we need to be growing our crops. We need to be grazing our livestock. We, we, have a, we have a nation to feed. And quite frankly, a lot of the rest of the world relies on food that is produced in our great country. These programs do that, as opposed to uh, we, we discourage fertile land from sitting idle. Uh, it's the marginal lands we, we invest in with this modernization. It reauthorizes and funds uh, successful programs such as the feral swine eradication program, and quite frankly, they're devastating many parts of the country, uh, and the voluntary public access and habitat incentive program, an incredible program when it comes to, uh, uh, to wildlife uh, through uh, promoting the right kind of habitat on that rural acreage. It emphasizes science, technology, and innovation, including within the conservation practice standards, establishment, and the review processes. Agriculture is the backbone to the most of the world's economies and robust promotion uh, programs not only create market access, but protect our agricultural interests and acts as a catalyst for innovation and economic growth. Mr. Speaker, the trade title expands the research and impact of the market access program and the foreign market development program. 
The 2024 Farm Bill will mitigate global food insecurity while providing U.S. producers new markets, uh, in, <coughs> excuse me, improving local economies and lessening the damage of this administration's ineffective trade agenda. Mr. Speaker, our bipartisan Farm Bill doubles funding for MAP and FMD. They've never been increased since those programs were created. We double those. We know how important that is. We've listened to our farmers and ranchers around the country. It prioritizes U.S. commodities rather than unlimited market-based assistance. It balances the authorities of USAID with those of USDA. It lessens the bureaucracy associated with programs meant to respond to immediate crisis. It addresses trade barriers and infrastructure deficiencies. It fosters education and partnerships to ensure developing countries can benefit from our nation's advanced research and developing technologies. The nutrition title, Mr. Speaker, is a really important title within the Farm Bill. The fact is, I think it's a, it's a, a value and a principle where we're from, right? Neighbors help neighbors in need. But it's also a, uh, a market program for our farmers. It's a workforce development program um, as we provide assistance for individuals who are struggling in poverty and new nutrition assistance to get the type of, of uh, SNAP <coughs> employment education and career and technical education to climb the ladder of opportunity. Yeah, it supports families formerly disallowed to receive benefits. It refocuses work programs to support upward mobility. It vests in and modernizes food distribution programs to create parity with urban programming. It promotes program integrity and state accountability. The biggest problem we've had with the nutrition program is not the Farm Bill program. It's how certain states have misappropriately implemented and administered that program. We take actions to provide better oversight and accountability on, uh, on those states as they, as they execute those programs uh, in their states. And it advances policies related to healthy eating, healthy behaviors, and healthy outcomes. Our bipartisan Farm Bill <clears throat> provides resources across multiple programs that have successfully benefited tribal communities, seniors, and households pursuing healthier options. Other, it offers significant opportunities for individuals to remain on their current career pathways without choosing between SNAP and employment. We encourage them to stay on those rungs of ladder opportunity to climb higher. It creates new access for participants either formally disallowed or beholden to arcane restriction. It corrects egregious executive branch overreach and disallows future unelected bureaucrats from arbitrarily increasing SNAP benefits. Congress holds the power of the purse, no one else. And we're the closest to the people here in the House. So this provision allows us to do our job as members of Congress going forward. It creates a stronger, more sustainable connection between uh, health and federal feeding programs. For example, the dietary guidelines process is flawed. The committee passed bill mark, makes certain scientific rigor and total transparency are at the forefront of any federal dietary policy. At a time when most of our food industry is under attack, it is so important to remember that science should guide our policy makers. It holds USDA and, and states accountable to the generosity of the American taxpayer. There are ongoing integrity issues in SNAP, including billions of dollars in fraud. Families. Uh, falling uh, uh, victim to, to transactional criminals and states manipulating data to avoid supporting able-bodied individuals in joining the workforce or pursuing career and technical education. We take measures to end that in this farm bill, Mr. Speaker. Our nation's producers borrow more capital in a single, har single harvest season than most Americans do in their entire lives. Interest rates have exploded under the Biden administration resulting in skyrocketing borrowing costs, which, which fall especially hard on our nation's younger, less established farmers producers. Programs within the credit title are instrumental in helping producers both start and maintain their operations. It enhances financing options for producers who are unable to obtain credit from a commercial lender. It provides resources to new, young, and beginning and veteran farmers in their transition from farming into farming and ranching. It protects and enhances the ability of commercial lenders to provide rural America with a reliable source of credit and capital. 
<clears throat> that's so important when you look at bigger projects in rural America, whether it would be schools or hospitals, uh, uh, rehabilitation centers, nursing homes. Programs offered by USDA's rural development play a vital role in enhancing rural life and fostering economic growth. Uh, the rural development title of the 2024 Farm Bill continues the long history of bipartisan support for rural development initiatives and implements important improvements to enhance a robust rural economy. It strengthens broadband connectivity to rural communities. It improves precision agriculture practices and increases accessibility of precision agriculture services. It protects access to health care in, <coughs> in rural America. It enhances efforts to meet child care demands of rural areas. It addresses existing workforce challenges within rural communities to effectively meet their needs, encourages private capital investments in rural communities, and it streamlines the permitting process for rural development processes. The research and extension title of the 2024 Farm Bill keeps America agriculture at the forefront of innovation and productivity through the cutting edge research and supports the nation's land grant and non land grant colleges of agriculture. Our bipartisan Farm Bill supports the modernization of the agriculture research facilities by providing funding for the Research Facilities Act, increases funding for the Specialty Crop Research Initiative, allocates funding for research and the development of mechanization and automation technologies for the specialty crop industry. It maintains funding for the Emergency Citrus Disease Research and Extension Program. It provides continued funding for scholarships for students at, at 1890 institutions. And it promotes interagency coordination for further agricultural research at other federal agencies. The forestry title of the Farm Bill promotes active forest management through incentivizing public-private partnerships, creating new market opportunities and revitalizing rural communities while reducing wildfire risk and improving forest health to ensure healthy and productive federal, state, tribal, and private forests. Incentives, incentivizes active forest management through the public-private partnerships by expanding existing authorities like the Good Neighbor Authority and the stewardship and result contracting. It creates new and enhances existing market opportunities for forest products, including existing and new data sources and tools, including investing in innovative wood products and expanding the use of biochar. It revitalizes rural communities and forest health through cross-boundary authority. It simplifies environmental process requirements while ensuring environmental protection by building upon the success of categorical exclusions and other streamlined authorities. The energy title of the Farm Bill increases access to energy system and efficiency updates for farmers, ranchers, and rural small businesses while encouraging growth and innovation for biofuels, bioproducts, and related feedstocks. It allows for critical cost and energy savings by increasing access to the Rural Energy for America program. It streamlines program delivery and enhances program integrity for bio-based market programs and biofuels and bioproducts. Uh, development program like the Bio Preferred program and the Bio Refinery, Renewable Chemical and Bio, bio Based Product uh, Manufacturing Assistance Program. It requires the administration to study the impacts of solar installations on prime, unique, or statewide or locally important farmland. Mr. Speaker, can I inquire how much time it remains? 12 minutes. Was that 12? The gentleman has 12 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Horticulture Marketing and Regulatory Reform title provides critical investments to enhance the competitiveness of specialty crops and protect plant health. It delivers common sense regulatory reforms necessary to relieve American farmers and ranchers from overregulation by the Biden administration. It provides additional funding for the Specialty Crop Block Grant Program <coughs> and directs program administrators to consult with specialty crop producers when setting priorities for the program. It increases funding for plant, pest, and disease management to further safeguard American agriculture and natural resources. It maintains funding for the local agriculture market program and improves program delivery through simplified application. And continues support for organic production through the National Organic Program, Organic Production, and the Market Data Initiative, and the National Organic 
certification cost share program. Agricultural producers are greatly affected by numerous factors outside of their control, ranging from extreme weather to geopolitical instability. Crop insurance, a vital risk management tool, is available to help producers manage the unique risks of farming and is delivered through an effective public-private partnership in which the federal government shares in the cost of the premiums, which would otherwise be unaffordable for most farmers. The crop insurance title of the Farm, Food, and National Security Act expands premium assistance for beginning and veteran farmers. It directs research and development of new policies and establishes an advisory committee for more robust engagement with specialty crop producers. It enhances certain coverage options to reduce the needs for unbudgeted and ad hoc disaster relief. It bolsters the private sector delivery system. Mr. Speaker, the miscellaneous title brings together provisions related to livestock health and management, foreign animal disease preparedness, young and beginning farmers, and other key areas. It directs additional resources towards the three-legged stool to protect the entire livestock and poultry industry in the United States from foreign animal diseases. This title provides guidance documents and other resources for small and very small meat and poultry producing facilities. It allows livestock auction owners to invest in packing facilities subject to capacity limitations. It directs the Secretary of Agriculture to work in consultation with the U.S. Trade Representative to negotiate animal disease uh, regionalization agreements with our trading partners. It enhances protections for dogs under the Animal Welfare Act. It clarifies that states and local governments cannot impose a condition <coughs> or standard on the production of covered livestock unless the livestock is physically located within such state or local government area boundaries. It requires the secretary to conduct regular assessments to identify risks and security vulnerabilities to the food and agriculture critical infrastructure sector. It reforms certain reporting requirements under the Agriculture and Foreign Investment Disclosure Act to ensure accuracy and transparency of data on farmland owned by foreign persons or foreign entities. Again, farm security is food security is national security. Mr. Speaker, as I wrap up, I want to thank the thousands of stakeholders across the country who have made themselves heard and been a part of this process so far. Um, from fly-ins to speaking directly to staff and members to hosting roundtables, webinars, social media campaigns, social media campaigns, drafting letters of support, and so much more. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we approach this bill in a tripartisan manner. That means bringing Democrats and Republicans to the table, but it means bringing the people of rural America and specifically agriculture, farming, to the table. Uh, we did that in traveling the country, around 40 states, one territory. Uh, I've been honored to, to uh, chair and lead somewhere close to 100 listening sessions uh, in those areas. And we brought the voices of American agriculture and American consumers uh, to the table. Uh, and that's how we wrote the bill. We wrote the bill with, with their voice. We did it in a manner I like to call from the outside in. You know, too frequently and often in this chamber, we write legislation that's inside out. So we gather a handful of so-called experts in, the, in here on Capitol Hill, and we write these bills, and then we take them outside the Beltway of Washington, and we try to convince everybody it's the best thing since sliced bread. Doesn't always work out. We did this bill from the outside in. We traveled the nation. We heard from the very people that provide us food and fiber and building materials. We heard from vulnerable populations who need nutritional assistance. The, people, the families are living in poverty, and there's way too many of them living in poverty today. That's why the cost of the nutrition title is so high. It's a reflective of the fact there are way too many American families living in poverty today. Um, this bill can help change that because Within the, the monies that are invested, as I talked about in the nutrition title, quite frankly, we, we invest in uh, 
on, uh, on, in, on employment education and career and technical education, helping them reach a ladder, the next rung on a ladder of opportunity, so that they can wake up one morning, you know what, and they don't need this type of assistance because they found the great American dream, which is opportunity. I often say, Mr. Speaker, if you're not at the table, you're probably on the menu. And, and it has been a truly rewarding experience to see so many advocates for our agriculture industry at the table as we craft, crafted this bipartisan bill. When I became chairman of the House Agric Committee on Agriculture, I took serious my mandate to protect our food supply and enhance the impact of our nation's agriculture value chain. As I have just highlighted across each the title of this bill are new and better tools and resources for our farmers and rural communities. From production and processing to delivery and consumption, this bill strengthens the rural economy across every region, state, and district. The Farm Bill has, been, has long been an example of consensus, where both sides must take a step off the soapbox and have tough conversations. I do not draw red lines. I do not close the door to con conversation. I do not keep anybody from coming to the table to work on legislation, and we certainly didn't do that. Uh, invited and encouraged everyone to come to the table with this Farm Bill. And finally, let me be clear. We continue to have productive conversations across the aisle and across the Capitol building. The stakes are high, uh, and they're too high to get this wrong or to fail to deliver, and I firmly believe the four corners of our Ag Committee agree on this. Working together, we can pass a bipartisan, bicameral, and highly effective farm bill. And uh, quite frankly, coming out of a, uh, with the bipartisan bill for the Farm, Food, and National Security Act of 2024 that passed out of committee is uh, a huge step in that direction. Mr. Speaker, I so appreciate the opportunity and the privilege of speaking on this, this floor about America's number one industry, which is agriculture, the industry that every American family is so dependent on. And not just those three times a day when they pick up the tools of American agriculture, be it a f knife, fork, or spoon, uh, but when it comes to the economy, when it comes to jobs, when it comes to economic impact, uh, when it comes, quite frankly, to the taxes that are paid by these hardworking uh, members of the agriculture industry, processors, producers, um, at, at all levels of government, tax, significant tax dollars to get get paid to pay for what we hope are, are the essential services at all levels of government. Uh, this industry is about, and the tools of it make a better environment, um, and it makes a cleaner climate. I always like to cite data that I was so excited to read here, you know, that, that shows that our American farmers are the climate champions of the world. They sequester 6.1 gigatons of carbon annually. Now that's 10.1% more than what they admit. Nobody does it better when it comes to a cleaner climate than the American farmer. Well, farmer, rancher, forester. And our processors as well with the processes that we use and the products that are developed. And so, <coughs> let me be clear as I close, Mr. Speaker. America is, an, is in a farm and food crisis. And if we don't have farms, we don't have food, we don't have food security, we don't have national security. A nation that cannot feed itself will not exist. Um, and so I'm hoping that all of my members, all, all of my colleagues will join me, as many have, in supporting the Farm, Food, and National Security Act of 2024. I look forward to getting this bill to the House floor in the lame duck session. I know I have the support of uh, the other three corners which is the leadership of the, of, the, of the Senate and the House Agriculture Committee. Uh, they've made a commitment to do that. We don't see a need for an extension. We, need to, we, need, we see a need for Congress, that being the House and the Senate, to do our job and to get the work done on behalf of the American people. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back. Gentleman yields.